with us to the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter number 15. 1 Corinthians, chapter number 15. First Corinthians chapter number 15. I want to read to you some scripture here concerning the resurrection of Christ. Uh, this message, by way of introduction, this message is not a message intended to prove the resurrection of Christ. This is not an apologetical message where I try to prove a point because I simply believe and you simply believe if you do the word of God. And people down through the centuries have tried to discredit the scripture when it speaks of the resurrection and among many other things that it talks about the gospel. But I want to tell you something, friend, it's all real, it's all true, it's all in the word of God, and you believe that or you don't believe at all. And that's kind of hard to, you know, hard to grab a hold of, but you either believe the Bible or you don't believe the Bible. And if you believe the scriptures, then you can come to know the Lord. If you don't believe the scriptures, you cannot be born again. So this message is not to prove the resurrection, but to kind of give you some look, outlook on what it means to you and what it means to me. So we titled our message today, it would be, What Does the Resurrection Mean to You? What does it mean to you? Now Easter, as, as all other Christian holidays, has become a commercialized uh, day. And, uh, you know, and, and a lot of money is spent commercially capitalizing on, and this is the country we live in, it's fine, capitalizing on, on uh, a, a holiday where they can make money, make profit. But the central issue is that of all, if it wasn't for Jesus, they would, this would not be even a, <coughs> a day to remember. But because of him, friend, we have an Easter. Now, Easter to the, <coughs> excuse me, Easter to the child of God is more important than Christmas. Now we get all excited about Christmas. I do. I enjoy it. I enjoy Christmas. But when you think about it, friend, as we'll tell you here in just a minute, when you think about it, it's because of Easter. It's because of the resurrection that makes the gospel possible. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, in verse number 12, I'll begin reading. Paul here is speaking to the church of, at Corinth. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you there is no resurrection of the dead? Now apparently there had been some that had crept into the church of Corinth that said the, the resurrection is not real. So Christ, in the, or, or Paul in his letter to those at Corinth, he says, how can some of you say among you, there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain? Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God, that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised? And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in these, this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead. But now is Christ risen from the dead. Paul makes his assertions of what it means to, if Christ is not risen from the dead, he tells the, well, what the uh, results of that, if Christ was not risen, then he says, but, but, now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word of God. Blessed, I pray. Help us to rightly divide the word of truth. And Lord, we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Death came to man through Adam. In the Garden of Eden, we read the story of, of creation. We read the story in the book of Genesis of creation of the Garden of Eden. 
We read the story of Adam and Eve, and we read the story of how Eve partook of the fruit of, that she wasn't supposed to, and guess what? It brought, it brought sin to her. And then because Adam came and without, without you know, knowingly, he partook of the fruit of that which Eve did also. And when he partook of that fruit, sin entered into the world because he committed the sin willfully. And so in the Garden of Eden, man spiritually died through Adam. Christ is the second Adam. And through Christ, Christ came into the world and was resurrected. And so because all men have sinned and come short of the glory because of Adam's sin, all that will believe Jesus will be resurrected at the end of their life if they trust the Lord. If they die, they'll go to the grave, but they will be resur have a resurrected body when the Lord comes back. If we're alive and remain, we'll be caught up together to meet the Lord in air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. We'll have a body likened to Him. So friend, today everything that we believe of the gospel, all is based upon the principle that Christ arose from the dead. If he be not risen from the dead, my faith is in vain. My preaching is in vain. Everything, everybody that's ever died believing, uh, you know, believing in the death of Christ, without the resurrection, it's all in vain. I'm glad I serve a risen Savior. I'm glad there's an empty tomb that you can visit over in Jerusalem. There is, a, there is an empty tomb that you can go see that there's nothing there. Never have found anything there. That's the place where the Lord lay. That's the place where his body lay. But he's not there. Now listen, friend. He had the power to resurrect himself from the dead. Now, people all down through the years have tried to say, well, they stole his body. He didn't, you know, he didn't resurrect himself, and that wasn't the right tomb. But listen, I'm telling you, because of the word of God, I believe that Christ was resurrected. Now, what does all that mean to me? What does it mean to you? Does it mean anything to you? If you're a child of God, it ought to be a great blessing knowing that we serve a risen Savior. You think about all the other religions that are in this world. Christianity is the only religion that celebrates a live Savior, that celebrates a live God. All the others are dead. All the... Uh, all the others, you can go visit their tombs where they were buried and their remains are still there. But ours is not in the tomb. He's in heaven at the right hand of the Father. Now, friend, I celebrate a risen Lord. I celebrate a risen Savior. What does the resurrection mean to you? You must believe the Scriptures, first of all, to even believe the resurrection. You've got to believe the Word of God. What does it mean to the believer? It means that my preaching is not in vain. When I stand before you, as we uh, stand before you, and I preach to you the things of the Word of God, whether it be the, the, just the simple gospel message, or whether it be a truth in Scripture, if not for the resurrection, my preaching would be in vain. I'd be spinning my wheels and wasting my time. I would, I would uh, you know, I would rather be if, if my preaching was in vain, I'd be better off out in the world somewhere making a dollar. But because of the resurrection, my preaching's not in vain. Amen? What I preach to you from the Scripture is the truth, and it will stand, and it all stands because of the resurrection. The gospel message that I told these youngins here a while ago, I, I looked and looked all over uh, for something for this weekend. Nothing would come. And the Lord said, just give them the gospel. Tell them the reason. Give them the gospel. And that simple message of the gospel in itself is complete enough to save whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. It's not in vain. What I told these youngins, it is not in vain because of the resurrection. My preaching is not in vain because of that. The, rex, the resurrection to the believer means that the gospel is complete. Now, the gospel message is what? That Jesus was born of a virgin. You believe that? Say amen. amen. 
You know, most people that don't believe cannot get past the fact that Jesus was born of a virgin. They cannot believe that. That's impossible. With man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And, and if, they, if you don't believe that part, you can't believe the rest of it. And you cannot. What happened next? Jesus what lived a sinless life. He was born sinless. He was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. And the next step in the gospel is what we preached to you on last Sunday. He was crucified. One of the most horrendous, horrid deaths that anyone could suffer or can suffer even today is crucifixion. You cannot, I cannot, I, I, last night I studied, last night, on, I, know we're, I know it's Easter, but I was studying on what Christ did for me and I was studying the crucifixion. Now I'm telling you, friend, it was a, a horrid death. It was a horrible death. And the pain that Christ suffered, you cannot imagine what pain. There is no one here who came close to suffering the pain that Christ suffered for you and I. Do a study on it yourself. Look up crucifixion and study what happened when someone was crucified. It's horrible. But I remember the, the scripture tells me that Christ was crucified. And so the part of the gospel of Christ being crucified is real. The virgin birth, the sinless life that Christ lived, the, the crucifixion of the Lamb of God as He hung between heaven and earth for you and I, He shed His blood for me. That is part of the gospel. And very important are those parts of the gospel. But the end of the gospel is the resurrection. Because if they had been able to put Christ in a tomb and he lay there like anyone else and he not resurrected from the, uh, from the grave, then all the else that he had done would be to man, it would be in vain. It wouldn't help us. But he promised that he would arise. He said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will, I will raise it up again, talking about the temple of his body. And so on the third day, Christ resurrected himself from the grave to complete the gospel message. So friend, if you believe the gospel, if, you, if that's as plainly as I can put to you the gospel, if you believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you will trust the scripture with all your heart and believe that, know that you're a sinner and believe that gospel and ask Jesus into your heart, he, say, he says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, that's what it means to me. The gospel means to me that the gospel, is, the, the, the resurrection means that the gospel is complete. The resurrection also means for me that there will be a resurrection for me. Amen? Now, I stood this morning and, and preached in the cemetery for about 10 minutes. It was cold out there. I mean, it was cold. And so I didn't, I didn't belabor too long on the preaching. But I preached there this morning, and I was preaching in a cemetery where all the folks that have died have been buried. Some of them go back into the 1700s, I think, right? But all those that have died back there, some of them have died in the faith believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. And no doubt some of them back there have died and never accepted Christ as their Savior. You don't want to think that, but I'm sure there's some that have. And I don't know the particular headstone that I used for a pulpit. I used it last year also. And I don't know about that person, but I looked at that name, and I don't remember what name. I looked at that name, and I wondered, is this man saved? Was this man, did he die in the faith that I'm standing over his, behind his headstone today? Now, friend, I tell you, if that be the case, should the rapture take place, he and I, he would meet me about head high and we'd go to be with the Lord. Amen? I know, friend, because he lives and because he resurrected himself from the grave. Remember, Adam, the first man, died to sin. Adam, the second man, died for our sins and arose. And we being like the first Adam, dead in our sins, Christ died for our sins. He arose 
One day, friend, you and I are going to rise to be with the Lord. Amen. That's what the resurrection means to me. It gives me hope, friend. It gives me hope. The gospel gives me hope. The resurrection gives me hope that one day I too will rise and go to Jesus. Amen. Jesus today sits at the right hand of the Father to make intercession for you and I. But soon, my friend, soon there's coming a day when I too shall go to be with the Lord. The resurrection of Christ means also the resurrection for the believer. Then also the resurrection means to the, to the believer that we can face tomorrow because of Him. The song says, because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because I'm not serving a dead God, amen, I can face tomorrow and whatever it might hold. And I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what I'm going to face tomorrow. You don't know what you're going to face. This world and all its and all the things that are going on in this world, the, the terror of this world, we don't know what we're going to face, but we know we'll be able to face it because of Jesus. Did you know per Christians are being persecuted more today than they ever have been in the history of mankind? Now, we don't see a lot of that in our country, but I'm going to tell you something. If Jesus don't come back soon, we're going to begin to face those hard things in our country also. Now there is a persecution, it has not yet become physical, but there is a persecution of believers. Our religious freedoms are slowly being taken from us, and it is because no one will stand up and say, look, we have our freedoms, we have our rights, we have our desires to worship the true and the one and true God. Listen, friend, they're slowly slipping away from you and I. But in spite of all of that, we can face tomorrow because we know that Jesus lives. Amen. Now, he's not, Christ is not just some figment of your imagination. Christ is not some story that you've heard in a book. Although you've heard it in a book, he's not just a story. He is a reality. He is a, 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 a true person. He is one that died for my sins. He is one that rose for my sins. And because I know that I have him in my heart, I can face tomorrow and not have to worry and not have to fear. Now, I listen to a lot of things on the news. Not as much as you used to. It gets too depressing. And it's the same stuff over and over and over, just a different day. And it's the same thing over and over and over. Listen, friend, I want to tell you something. Until Jesus comes, it's not going to get any better. I don't want to disappoint you. I don't want to dishearten you. But until Jesus comes, things are not going to get a whole lot better. But hey, man, it can remain the same in your heart and in mine, and we can go ahead and face it because we know that he lives in our heart. And we know that this is not the end for the child of God. Sometimes I stand over people's bodies as we preach their funeral, and for the child of God, it's pretty easy to stand over there and tell that it is not the end for them. But to preach the funeral of a lost man, one that doesn't know God, it's hard. Because you realize if you know for a fact that they never accepted Christ, you stand there over them knowing that they are in hell without God, without hope. Now, friend, that's what's going to happen to those that don't believe. They're going to die lost without God. You don't have much hope if you don't know the Lord. Because all you've got to trust in is this world and the things of this world. And the world looks pretty miserable right now. But amen, I'm glad Jesus lives in my heart. Amen. I can face tomorrow because I have the Lord. And I know that he will see us through because we believe in him. We trust in him and because he's alive forevermore. Now, what does, it, what does, the, what does the resurrection mean to the unbeliever? Now, I don't know who here that may be lost without God. Pretty good crowd this morning. There's probably someone here that's never trusted Jesus as their Savior. And I'll be the first to say, I don't know who you are. But I'll also be the first to tell you that you must be born again. And here is the way that, there's what the resurrection means for the believer. It means that there is still hope for you. You're here, you're listening. I've told you the gospel. And I'm going to tell you right now that there's hope for you if you'll trust the Lord as your Savior. Now, 
that your hope is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The Bible tells us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means all people are sinners in need of a Savior. The Bible tells us that my righteousness is as filthy rags. The Bible tells me there's no, no one that's good. No one that's perfect. No one that's holy. No, not one. The Bible tells me all of these things. The Bible also tells me for the unbeliever that does not believe in the resurrection, the, the unbeliever that has never trusted Christ to them, there's hope for you if you'll trust the Lord. But if not, if you don't believe in the finished work of Christ upon the cross of Calvary, and if you don't believe in the resurrection, it means that you will die in your sins. The resurrection means you don't have to die in your sins, but if you do not trust Christ, you will die in your sins. Now what does that mean to die in your sins? That means to die without salvation. That means to die without hope. That means to die without Jesus in your heart. And that only leads to an eternal damnation and judgment in the pit of hell. Everybody bow your head just a minute. I don't want nobody looking around. I don't want you to open the corner of your eye. I want to ask you this morning, is there anyone in this building that wants to go to hell? Is there anyone that wants to go to hell? About what I figured, is there anyone that wants to go to heaven? About what I suppose. I look back up here at me. I only met one, I asked, I've asked that question a lot of times to a lot of people. I've been in prison, just missed him. I've been in prison and I've walked before people and, and you, you know, people in prison, you got to treat them like they'll treat you. And if they get smart with you, you just have to get right back in their face. And many times they'll do that because they're there, sometimes because of their arrogance and, and uh, got them there to start with and they'll be arrogant with you. And then I, but I've asked many people, I, I, right face to face, I, I look at them in, in prison and they, you know, look at them and I say, do you want to go to hell? And I either get that, that stare like you're giving me. Do you want to go to hell? That's the answer, one of the two. That's serious. That's, that's what, they'll either look at you like, what are you talking about? Or they'll say, no, no, I don't want to go to hell. And then I proceed to ask them, well, what are you doing about it? And what are you going to do about it? And if I ask you face to face, every individual in this building this morning, if I ask you face to face, do you want to go to hell? You'll all say no. I met one one time that said yes. I didn't know what to do. I did. I walked up to a fellow, and I'm not even going to ask you to even, even act like this guy did. But I walked to him. I said, uh, buddy, uh, are, are, are you saved? No. I said, well, do you want to go to heaven? No. Do you want to go to hell? Yes. And I said, excuse me? And I found out later from one of the guards that he was a lunatic, that he was crazy. <laughs> now that's the only one that's ever, that's ever answered me that in the positive. Well, they, cra they were off in their head anyway. Listen, I'm telling you, no one in their right mind wants to spend eternity in hell. I mean, who in the world would want to spend eternity in the flames of hell for all, oh preacher, it's not going to be that bad. That's a lie from hell. That's a lie from the devil. It will be that bad and worse. As much as I cannot imagine how good heaven's going to be, sister. I think about it and my mind just don't go that way that far because I don't have the mind to understand the full glory of what heaven's going to be. Also, my mind cannot fathom the terror of hell. That fire burned over in Black Mountain. And uh, I watched that thing. And I, sometimes the flames were 100 feet high over the trees. And I watched that blow, and I thought, people are going to spend eternity right in the middle of that if they don't get saved. Now, you know what's happened to a lot of believers? We don't care anymore. That stung, didn't it? But it's the truth. We don't care anymore if our... If our if our brother or sister, our neighbor dies and go to hell. If we did, 
we'd be doing what we could to tell them not to go to hell. If I'm driving down, if I'm driving down Gabriel's Creek and a herd of deer is coming across the road and I know I'm going to hit one of them, a car is coming, I blink my life, try my best to keep them running into those deer. If a bridge is out and I'm going across, and I'm going and I see a bridge is out and I see a car coming, I'm going to do everything I can to get that car from running off into the, into the river because the bridge is out. Friend, I'll tell you something. People are dying and going to hell. We know it, and we don't even warn them. That's sad, isn't it? Now, to the lost man, to the unbeliever, to the lost woman, to the lost boy, the lost girl, the resurrection means that you don't have to die in your sins. You don't have to die lost. There's hope for you. And it's certain this morning that I am, that I'm going to heaven when I leave this world. The same certainty is for you that you're going to hell if you don't accept Christ as your Savior. Now, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just telling you what does say the Word of God. I love lost sinners. If I didn't, I'd never... I, I, that's why I'm telling you this morning, if you're here and you're lost, I'm telling you because I love you. And I don't want you to go to hell. No reason for you to go to hell. No, no reason at all. Now, if you're here lost without God, let me ask you something. What's worth going to hell over? You tell me what's worth going to hell over. A good time, a good party, is that worth going to hell over? See, the devil come to you and you say, well, now, if you get saved, you're going to have to quit living your lifestyle that you're living. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to quit your drinking. You're going to have to quit your carousing. You're going to have to quit your partying and you things that you do that you know is not right to start with, but you do them because it's a pleasure to the flesh. The devil tells you, you're going to have to give up all of that. And the old flesh says, well, I enjoy those things, so I'll just wait. Very rarely do I ever meet anybody that gets saved on their deathbed. Once in a while, probably one out of ten million or so will get saved on their deathbed, maybe, if the Lord's dealing with them. But I'll tell you something, if God's dealing with your heart this morning, you're lost without God, this may be your only opportunity you ever have to come to know the Lord. The bridge is out, don't run off in the river. Death is coming if you're lost without God, don't go to hell. Nothing worth going to hell over. You say, well, preacher, I, I made a profession of faith and I'm all right. Listen, a pro profession without a possession is worthless. Many will cry, Lord, Lord, and he'll say, Depart from me, you that work in equity. I never knew you. Listen, friend, it's one thing to have a head knowledge. It's another thing to have a heart knowledge of salvation and salvation's plan. Do you have Jesus in your heart? I'm not asking you to have Jesus in your head. I'm asking you to have Jesus in your heart. If you don't, you'll die in your sins, helpless and hopeless for all eternity. But the resurrection means that you don't have to go that way. The resurrection means that you don't have to die in your sin. The resurrection means that it's the finished work of the, the finished plan of salvation. Christ paid our sin debt and finished the work of, 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 of paying our sin debt on the cross when he cried, it is finished. But when he resurrected himself from the grave, it was the stamp of perfection upon God's, on the gospel plan. It was the seal of perfection upon the gospel plan when he resurrected. It was the completion. It was the, it was the stomping of the devil's head when Christ resurrected himself. Back in the Garden of Eden, the Lord said, I'm going to bruise your head. I'm going to crush your head. And when Christ resurrected himself from the grave, he crushed the head of the devil. It is finished. Salvation's plan is complete. Jesus died for your sins and for my sins and for all those that will call upon the name of the Lord. They'll be saved. For all those that don't, you'll die lost without God. Oh, God in heaven, help us. If we know someone that's lost, to give them the gospel. 
If you're here that lost this morning, simply as I can tell you. Again, the Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means you're a sinner. No matter if you live good or not, you're still a sinner. The Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Simple as it can be put, believe in thine heart and thou shalt be saved. What will you do with the gospel today? What does the resurrection mean to you? While every head's bowed, no one looking around, I'm through. I'm finished. I've preached as long as the Lord wants me to do. In conclusion of the message, believers go to heaven. Unbelievers go to hell. Simple as I can put it. I wonder while I'm standing here and while no one's looking around, I wonder if there'd be one this morning in the building that'd raise your hand and say, Preacher, I'm lost without God and there's nothing worth going to hell over and I don't want to go to hell. Would you slip up your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me. I will not come and point you out or embarrass you. I just want you to Re realize and recognize between you and God that you're lost. Is there one? Raise your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm lost. Why would